next, we are going to be talking about the Fountain Centre in Guildford. The Peter Gordon Pod with PG, Bev and Matt. A lot of the times on this podcast over these uh, last few episodes, we've been catching up with various organisations, various people, uh, individuals who have represented various aspects of life in and around our community. Right at the heart of the community to do with cancer care and the cancer services that Royal Surrey County Hospital is involved in uh, is the Fountain Centre. Uh, an amazing place. Um, you may have heard about it. Maybe you've been in a way lucky enough not to hear about it yet, but it may well be that someone you know or in your family, if not, if it's not you, will have heard of the Fountain Centre. Joining me uh, now is the head of the centre, and it's uh, Anne Pike. And it's nice to have you on. Thank you, and thank you for having me. So I was just mentioning just then, there may be some people um, that don't know the Fountain Centre yet. And in many ways... That may be a lucky thing for them. There's lots of people that do. So can you just, in, in, in normal times, let's forget 2020 just for a moment, but for normal times, what is the Fountain Centre and what is it you do? So the Fountain Centre um, is an independent charity. Um, we're a small local charity. Um, we sit within the Royal Surrey County Hospital um, and we're part of St Luke's Cancer Centre. And we provide information and support to anybody affected by a cancer diagnosis. Um, the hospital are amazing at providing the, the treatment and the medical side of things, but we now know that more and more people really struggle with other aspects of a cancer diagnosis, whether that is symptoms and side effects or the psychological impact of it, the financial side of it. So we provide all those extra stuff. So we have um, a small team of staff um, and a very big team of volunteers um, that all come in and give their time. And they vol those volunteers will provide everything from complementary therapy to a wig service um, to counselling and coaching. Um, we've got a financial or benefits advisor um, and we offer other things like groups and like yoga and exercise, as well as information and being able to signpost patients onto other support services as well. And we work really closely with the hospital. Um, and those links are really important to make sure that patients know about us and the patients flow through to us. And we open those communications up with those um, members of staff as well. Certainly, um, just from, from, from personal experience in terms of, of friends that I know that have, have used the Fountain Centre, whenever you mention the Fountain Centre to someone that's used it, they go, oh yes, the Fountain <laughs> Centre. It's almost like they immediately breathe out. There's a, there's a some sort of, you know, there's a, there's a stress goes because you just mentioned the Fountain Centre. That is a, yeah. that's a mighty, a mighty effect um, to have had on people. And that just shows what a wonderful place it is. But we just talk about where things are for you now. Can we just go back in time during this year? You know, every single person, guest we've had on this podcast, we've talked about the effects of this year. And of course you did have to close. You couldn't do your normal service for quite some time. But although the centre itself was used, wasn't it, during what I would call the, the real height of COVID? It was, yes. So we're really lucky that we've got a dedicated space within the hospital. Um, what's lovely about it is it's not clinical. So patients can come in and sit down on the sofas and have a cup of tea and a biscuit and have a level of support. Obviously, when lockdown happened, we had to shut our doors. And so what we did was we handed that space over and the support that we offer within that space to the staff at the hospital. So it was an area that staff could come in and relax. We provided them with things like aromatherapy oils just to help them relax, um, able to put them some therapies, um, did some meditation, et cetera, for them. Uh, we've also got a lovely garden. So again, we were able to open up the garden staff um, and those, that garden is looked after by volunteers. And so in the summer, even though it was a really difficult time, it was in bloom and staff could just have some time out. And it was really important um, for us to be able to make sure that we could continue to support staff, but also um, for the staff to have a special place and a safe place to be able to go and relax um, because it was tough. The other thing, though, and, and of course, this has been, there's been a, from a medical point of view, of course, this year, there's been a sort of double level conversation going on, hasn't there? There has been this front line of COVID, coronavirus, 
families devastated, people affected, um, everything affected. But underneath all of that has also been, but what's happening to the people who have got some long-term illness, um, other uh, aspects that they're having to deal with, quite apart from the fact that that may, may make them vulnerable to the whole COVID situation. But what about their primary treatment for the conditions like cancer that are going on? So as we move towards the end of 2020, Anne, what are you seeing now with regards to that side of things? So I think that um, over time, um, people have started to go and seek more help. Um, We're definitely seeing that cancer services have been carrying on um, with changes. So people wearing masks and staff and patients are having regular um, COVID tests. Um, We've been really lucky. We were able to um, turn a lot of our services virtually. So all our counselling and coaching went virtual. Um, And now we're starting to open our doors again. So we're doing a mixture of um, face-to-face and virtual stuff. Um, Initially, I think both with, um, we've seen in the press how um, people weren't going forward for diagnostic tests and going to seek help from their GP. We're starting to see people coming through and that's both for um, cancer treatments, but also the the elements of support that we can offer them. So we've seen our numbers rising. So in October, you know, we saw 40 new patients. By November, we've seen 100 already. So the, the people are starting to reach out more for um, the support that we offer. On the, because you're part of the, the you know the the medical community as it were um, in and around Guildford and and obviously in a vital um, uh, institution in, in Surrey as a whole, um, what's the feeling been like in these last few days really um, of the fact that you know vaccines coming through um, how how has that how has that sort of gone through the um, the, the, the medical community a little bit in, in the Royal Surrey and, and beyond? Um, I think. There's hope, which is amazing. Um, And I think there's still a lot of questions. Um, And I think that's the reality because as the information is released, I think the hospital is then, um, you know, trying to work out how they respond to that in a safe way. Um, And that's the bit that's really, really important. Obviously, it needs to come and the vaccines, you know, we've, there's a process to follow, um, but the safety is really important. But I think, yeah, there's, a, there's, there's hope that there is going to be returning to a sense of normality. And that's really important, you know, going up onto a ward with cancer patients there and they don't get to have a visitor because um, of the restrictions, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking to see. So that hope that, you know, in times that things will start to returning, whereby that level of support can go back in is really important. Okay, well, you know, as you say, there's there's hope and that's the main thing. Now, you also mentioned earlier on, you know, the Phantom Centre is a charity um, and it may well be that people listening to this maybe want to find out more anyway um, about uh, about helping the Fountain Centre or even information about the Fountain Centre, which of course may be useful for, for them or people they know. So what's the best way to find out more and get in touch, Anne? Um, So we've got a really active website now. That's one of the things we prioritised over lockdown is to make sure that our website was up to date and it was really easy to navigate around. So there's lots of information on there, but there's also information about some of our events that are happening. We have a virtual um, quiz night on the 18th of December. And then we've also got um, an event in February with George McGavin, who's one of our um, patrons. Um, But other things is, please just make sure you tell people about the Fountain Centre. You know, everybody knows somebody with cancer. And if they are struggling or they need some support, please tell them to reach out to us. We're here for them. The other things are just to tell um, your friends about us and maybe people who you work with. You know, we are really lucky that we get supported by local businesses and communities um, and actually being nominated as you know their charity of the year means that you know we we have opportunities to um, be able to do events with them Um, we know as a lot of people you know have said that you know income is going to be down Um, donations are significantly down for us Um, so you know we we do need to have support from the local community to be able to keep keep going really Um, So, yeah, just to look at our website, follow us on our social media page. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter um, and, you know, help us if you can. 
yeah, online and also on social media. Just search for the Fountain Centre. It's very easy. I did it this morning and uh, it's uh, easy to find. Um, Anne Pike from the Fountain Centre. Uh, we wish you and all that work with you and everyone you look after well, of course. And uh, may you have a happy Christmas as well. Thank you. Happy Christmas to you too. The Peter Gordon Pod. And thank you once again to Anne Pike uh, from the Fountain Centre. Uh, fascinating information in that interview. And um, uh, hopefully they will uh, keep on going and keep providing the fantastic services that I know that they do for so many local people. Uh,